Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and I'd like to welcome you to the good and the bad of Easter 2023. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Please join me as we praise God in the words of the opening song, Jesus Christ is risen today. Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and I'd like to welcome you to the good and the bad of Easter 2023. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Please join me as we praise God in the words of the opening song, Jesus Christ is risen today. The Bible encourages us to draw near to God with a sincere heart. Yet if we were to be honest about the condition of our heart, we must acknowledge that our hearts are anything but sincere. They are filled with impure motives. They are torn by competing desires. They are darkened by sin. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Please lift up your voices with me in a prayer of confession. Gracious Lord, Almighty God, there is no one who measures up perfectly, no one who can meet the demands of your righteous law. Forgive us all our sins and iniquities with which we have ever offended you. Renew us through the power of the gospel, Christ's resurrection power, that is infinitely beyond all our senses. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote, By this gospel you are saved. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and was raised on the third day. As God's called and ordained servant, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By grace, through faith, receive your share of his good Easter victory. The forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation he won for you. Amen. We praise God as we sing, Christ is risen. Psalm 16 is the psalm for today. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. 
The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night, also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our Old Testament lesson is Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall adorn yourself with tambourines, and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Arise, and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings, and they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon song this morning is Glorious Day. Praises. One day when sin was as 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is our privilege on this Easter Sunday to consider both the good and the bad of Easter. And from our perspective, as chocolate bunny chomping, near type 2 diabetics, grasping for ourselves various treats and candies, and looking back on almost a couple thousand years of 2020 hindsight, there doesn't seem to be too much bad news connected with Easter. After all, we focus primarily on Christ's resurrection from the dead. He who is the resurrection and the life, who created the entire world through the power of his word, and who holds it all together, Colossians 1, 16 and 17, who lay down his life, as we hear in John 10, and picked it up again, he's got the authority to do whatever he wants and the power to do whatever he wants. And so we look back and we see that stone flipped aside we see the empty tomb and some of us tourists like Mrs. Fritz and myself have actually gone to Israel and peered around a number of different sites which may or may not be authentic in connection with the life of Christ and his miracles. But even those that aren't give a sense of the majesty and might of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we look back and we have the assurance of centuries, almost millennia, to confirm that he who is the resurrection and the life, who was beaten and brutalized after being absolutely betrayed by one of his disciples, and deserted by all 11 others, who endured a kangaroo court, who had his beard pulled out, who was beaten, mocked, and crucified, tortured beyond anything that any other human has ever experienced because he was actually forsaken by God on the cross. And the full literal weight of all sins of all people of your sins and my sins were nailed into his hands and his feet. And he literally became a curse 
for us on the cross. Terrible news. Terrible experience for Christ. And yet, the news that makes Good Friday a great day for us and for all who repent of our sins and trust in him because he is offering forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation, calling all to repent and trust in him. And just like any of the myriad revenge movies that are out there, he has the power as he comes back in judgment to do anything that he wishes. He is the one possessed of all authority in heaven and on earth, and he will judge all people on the entire planet for all time, even those who betrayed him, who deserted him, who abandoned him, who mocked and scorned him, and those whose sins put him to death. Now, the bad news of Easter is Christ's resurrection from the dead proves that he wasn't a fraud or a fake or a phony. He was not a liar making and inventing stories about himself. He has enough power to do anything that he wants to. And for your sake and mine, he was willing to lay that power aside and to be beaten and brutalized by our sins and to be nailed to our cross and to be buried in our tomb. But that's not the end of the story. Because he rose in glory, there is bad news for all who, repent, who fail to repent and to trust in him. The bad news is that he can punish when his time of grace and mercy runs out. When is that? When the heart stops beating and the last wisp of life leaves the body for individuals, or when Christ comes back with all his holy angels at the last trumpet sound. At that time, there will be no more options for repentance. The heavenly army of angels will force unbelievers to their knees, and everyone will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and yet at that nanosecond, too late, there will be no time for mercy. So the great good news of Easter is limited to those whom Christ is calling through the power of his word. He began his ministry saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He concluded it in majestic glory rising on that first Easter Sunday as the first fruits of all the dead. And as representative of all people, even those who don't believe in him are going to rise on Judgment Day. The Bible is really clear that all believers get perfect health and joy, and these bodies of ours that have been groaning under the weight and burden of sin for our entire lifetimes get changed in the twinkling of an eye into perfect health designed and empowered by the Holy Spirit to last forever and ever. But not so the unbelievers, who spend their entire lives pushing Christ and the Holy Spirit and the means of grace away, saying, no, no, not me, you can't fool me into eternal life and to receiving salvation. I'm too smart for that. And sadly, if they persist in rejecting the grace God offers and pours out through word and sacraments, the bad news gets indelibly etched. And sadly, there is a real hell.
There is a real punishment for all who reject the only way to avoid it, and that is repentance and faith in Christ as Savior and Lord. So this morning, on this Easter, on every Sunday, we celebrate Christ's gift to us of forgiveness his call to repentance, his gift to us of faith that clings to him and embraces him through his power and his power alone. And we do what we can, sharing his almighty and powerful word with our world, warning that yes, there is a bad side to Easter, but the great good news is that the bad side is perfectly and absolutely and totally avoidable. We have some experience in this particular area of the country, the greater Chicago area, with some potholes. And there are some potholes that are popping up at this time of year and careful drivers may be able to dodge some of them. Some of our friends who are missionaries in Africa said that some of the potholes there were six feet deep and maybe eight or 10 feet wide and 20 or 30 feet long. And those potholes were absolutely unavoidable. The bad side of Easter, by the grace of God poured out in Jesus Christ, who is the savior of mankind, is absolutely and totally avoidable. All of us who live long enough are going to die if Christ tarries, but we can avoid that second death, hellfire and damnation, because Christ took it for us. And he offers everyone forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation as his free gift. Repent. Trust in the good side of Easter and receive far better than anything this world can give. Receive the gift of him who is the resurrection and the life, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, And you will have the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, guarding and keeping your hearts and minds, in and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We now proclaim the atonement and the resurrection of the dead, the good and the bad of Easter in the words of the Nicene Creed, and declare the faith that saves for all who genuinely believe it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray. O Almighty God, Jesus had the power to lay down his life and take it up again, to create and hold together everything that exists, possessing all authority in heaven and on earth, 
returning in judgment, he is the resurrection and the life. All who believe in him will live, even though they die. He is the personification of good news for all who repent and trust in him. Increase our faith and our witness that Easter's confirmation of Christ's might, majesty, and judgment would touch those we love and lead them to eternal salvation by grace through faith. According to your will, grant healing to those we name in our hearts, the healing that you know to be best for them and their eternal well-being. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We praise God in the words of, I know that my Redeemer lives. Is risen he is risen indeed he rose therefore we will rise and because we believe in Christ Jesus through the power of his grace we will receive the good of Easter live for our Savior here in time and rise to live eternally amen